Hello, this is Ryan Womack, Data Librarian at Rutgers University, and this is part two of the Data Visualization Workshop. In this segment, we are just going to continue our introduction and talk about reasons why data visualization is important and start talking about the historical development of data visualization. In this section, we're not going to do any R coding or examples, so uh, if that's what you're interested in, uh, you can feel free to, to skip ahead or you know make use of these segments of video in any way that you that you like so here we're just going to give you that description so why is data visualization important um, data visualization is an easy way and one of the best ways to understand your data and that's really the focus that I'm taking in this workshop is the the researchers perspective of trying to understand your patterns of data, uh, not trying to make things the most beautiful or aesthetic or uh, entertaining. So with data visualization we can detect hidden structures of the data and we can condense a lot of information into into a one or more series of views that, that can reveal those patterns to us. And a great example of that is this Anscombe's Quartet, a classic example uh, and here we have four small data sets uh, with just a few points. And if we, if we plot the relationship here between the two variables, x and y, uh, and we tried to fit a standard linear regression to this data, each of these four sets of data has an identically sloped regression line. So what we're talking about is if you only saw the regression line, only saw the numerical output, that equation, you'd say, hmm, these are very, these would look very similar. But once we graph the data, we see immediately that there are striking differences. So the first case is what we would think of as our normal type of regression, a series of points randomly scattered around the regression line. And looks like a pretty good fit, probably can't do any better than that. Um, that's kind of what we have in the back of our mind when we think about regression. The second case we can see obviously this is not a linear relationship. If we tried to fit it with a quadratic equation we would get a much better fit. And we could probably detect that if we looked at the residuals um, of the, the fit in each of these points, but it's it's immediately recognized when you when you graph it. Uh, the third case is a different situation where we have uh, most of the points on a very flat shallow line and one point that's changing that relationship and so we'd want to investigate is that that outlier is it is it a mismeasurement is something going on is it a true relationship we immediately zero in on what is happening in this third picture. And then if we look at the bottom right, this is per perhaps the most extreme because in this case if we took away this one point there would be no relationship between the two variables at all. X doesn't change at all when Y changes. Um, but the one point drives the entire so-called uh, linear relationship. But obviously you, you get a strong sense of something very different going on when you look at it in graphical form. So just that kind of motivation to think of why are we doing this? Why is this important? Now before we get into the um, historical review, uh, I do have some links here to a few sites that go a little further in terms of the more fancy, beautiful, interactive graphics. If you want to get some ideas about all the creative things that people are doing, and they're really fascinating to look at, um, get some ideas about how um, people are using, you know, different kinds of, in, of imagery representing data, and and these links will help you explore that world. I. I don't want to go there with this workshop though, so, so please feel free to explore those on your own. Uh, what I do want to talk about is some general principles of what's good and bad in data visualization 
And this is very introductory, so again, we're not going to talk about too much. Uh, there, there's whole fields that study this. I'm not claiming to represent all of that. But some things you might want to know if you're thinking about what's good and bad in data visualization. Uh, one thing is that uh, pie charts, we'll talk a little bit more about this in just a second, but pie charts are really considered to be problematic by a lot of the data visualization experts. And we're going to see those examples in just a moment. Uh, then other things like clutter uh, are is another thing to avoid. And so we're going to talk through these examples in a second, but the links on the slides uh, can take you there. And I have a few other links to bad graphs. So if, you, if you're inspired by fear <laughs> rather than emulating good things, um, you may want to try these. So things like the 10 worst graphs, uh, I find this site kind of interesting because these are not just random graphs. These are things from scholarly publications. Um, and then they discuss a little bit about, you know, why is this why is this graph particularly uninformative, uh, for example? If you have a relationship like this, why even bother to, to plot it? But um, you have links to the actual articles and some discussion of you know, what, um, what the problems are. So try those links out, another set of ideas for you. And at this point, I want to I wanna talk about pie charts in more depth. So Okay, well, pie charts, what, what's, what's wrong with those? Those are everywhere. People use them all the time. Um, I can't believe you're complaining about pie charts. Well, so one problem with pie charts is that people often will misuse them, and, and they, they think a normal pie chart is a little bit boring, so let's jazz it up a bit. And if you do something like this, a 3D view of a pie chart, you're distorting your perception. And this pie chart, actually has very similar percentages for the categories, but because we're facing the, the blue side up close, we perceive that as the dominant um, sector. And even if you think about it and try to correct it, you still have some, some difficulty doing that. Even a, a more mild example of a pie chart, uh, a 3D pie chart, shows some of the problems. It's it be, Even with just a few categories, it becomes very hard to distinguish um, which slice refers to what. Now we could so called quote unquote help that problem by drawing some lines and matching these things up, but then we're, we're creating a very cluttered graph when we do that. Um, so the pie chart has some some limitations. Another <laughs> limitation of a pie chart is it, it often tends to be the first thing that people use without thinking and you get mistakes like this. This actually appeared on television during previous uh, election cycle and someone entered numbers and those numbers are uh, probably approval ratings for the, these candidates uh, not recognizing that they didn't add up to 100% and putting them in a pie chart representation is not the right thing to do. So you'll, you'll see things like that. Um, so, okay, suppose I avoid all those problems and I still want to use pie charts. Well, here's kind of the heart of the matter of the problem with pie charts. Even if you have a nice, dry, uh, simple, undistorted pie chart like this, here we have three pie charts representing, let's say, the market shares of five different products. And I ask you, which product has the, the, the highest share for question one? Which product has the highest share for question two? Well, okay, we can kind of see that. We, we say, well, black and the second um, group here are, are large. Uh, black is larger than red here. Black is kind of equal to red there. Black is smaller than red here, for example. But which one is really the biggest? Well, you have to start stop to think about it, right? If we do the same information in a bar chart, we can 
instantly see the, the distinctions, right? We can see that E is ranked number one in question one, and the second ranked is D, um, and A and B, which we might, which look rather similar, we can actually see B is a little bit bigger. Um, and in question two, we can see that the categories are, uh, the products have much more similar levels, but we can still distinguish which one is the highest, which one is the lowest, and we just get, we can perceive these differences much more quickly. And so what people will say is if you have a something you want to put in a pie chart, almost always you can put it in a, in a bar chart and get a better result. Probably the only exception to that is when you really want to emphasize the proportion between t two, maybe three options to show that, you know, one choice has a 60 percent has got 60 percent and one choice has 40 percent that might be okay but if you're using a pie chart recognize that some people may may say ah you know there there, there are better options available uh, the second sort of thing to think about and avoid is clutter so what do we mean by clutter we simply mean putting too much information on the graph. So here's one example of a graph, a chart with a lot of redundant information. So this is uh, drinking ages in Canadian provinces and several things that are wrong with this and you can probably spot these yourself. Um, we don't need decimals on the left hand side. Uh, there's only two values of response 18 and 19 so the decimals are not necessary putting 18 and 19 on top of every bar is unnecessary um, and we're labeling the provinces twice both below and on the bar um, you know maybe the ones below the bar are a little bit small to read uh, you could solve that problem by working with your font rather than plastering it over the sideways onto the bar um, this could be a really simple chart, and at, instead it looks just messy and confused. And clutter is is something you can always take an editing step and kind of remove some of that information. So I think let me stop here with this segment, and we've talked about motivating the the idea of what's good and what's bad in data visualization. Our next segment is going to talk about historically important figures in data visualization. So that's